everyone, welcome to Aftershoot. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to use Aftershoot Select. So from start to finish, using Aftershoot and many of its amazing features. So let's dive in. The first thing we're gonna do is click on New Album. You can click it in the upper left-hand corner or lower right-hand corner. And then we're gonna click on Start Culling. Now there are a couple different workflows available to you. You can decide if you're going to run the edits, the culling, and which order you wanna do it in. If your images are already in Lightroom, that's actually another video, which you'll have to check that one out separately. We're going over just starting from scratch with culling. I'm gonna go ahead and click through and find the folder that I would like to cull. We're gonna go ahead and find this one. I'm gonna click on import this folder and it's going to begin importing these files. Now you'll notice up along the top, there is a rainbow bar that's going to start loading all of the metadata for these files. So if you notice that they're not oriented correctly or not appearing in capture time order, it's because that metadata, that information is still loading. Now we don't have to wait for this screen to do anything. Once you've clicked import, you can either choose to add more files to this cull or you can click on start culling. Now we've landed on our culling preferences screen. This is a very important screen because this dictates the final results of your cull. So the first thing you have to do is choose what genre this is. So this is a sports photography session or others, depending on how you would classify it. We're gonna run it as sports. This is extremely important because there are multiple different algorithms working within Aftershoot for every type of session. So you would cull a wedding differently than you would cull a sports session. And because of this, we have different algorithms doing that. So it is important to select a genre that fits the type of shoot. And the first thing we have to decide now is whether or not we want an automated cull or a customated cull. So we're gonna proceed with the automated AI cull settings first. I can simply choose whether I want less photos or more photos by sliding the singular slider. This slider is going to automatically adjust different things such as the blur parameters, etc., based on the type of session that you've done. Now, if I head down to customized AI cull, I can now turn on or off any one of these features available to me. So I can turn on or off the highlights if I'd like to. I can also customize how strong the groupings are for the duplicates. Now, when you're in the automated AI cull, it's going to choose these things automatically. Whereas in this customized cull, I can actually decide if I want to have small groups of images or if I want larger groups of images altogether. I can also still decide if I'd like my blurry photos to be set to strict or lenient. As mentioned before, if you're using the AI cull automatically, it's going to figure out what that proper threshold based on your photography style is. Whereas in this case, we're directing it to do a specific thing. I can turn on or off closed eyes as well. And once I've made all my decisions, I can either choose to start culling or I can choose to change the stars and colors. So I may want to go in and revise some of the existing ones. I personally like to set my highlights and selected images to be the same but different colors. Whereas other photographers like to flip that around and maybe have them be the same color, different star ratings, or they decide to do them totally separately. It's entirely up to you how you wanna organize these settings. We're gonna go ahead and click on start culling and it's gonna run through and do its magic. Now I've taken the liberty to already cull some images for you. So instead of watching it load, we're gonna go ahead and skip to a session that has already been culled. As you can see, I've already run this cull. I've gone from 807 photos all the way down to 199. 56 of them are blurry, two are closed eyes, and there are 515 duplicates and 40 images that are warnings. So I'm gonna go over these quick filters because these are extremely important to understand and how they operate and how you can review them in your cull. The first one I wanna go over is your warnings. Warnings are images in which Aftershoot believes that you took this photo intentionally, but it doesn't think that it's a great photo, right? So it's looking at things like blur and closed eyes, et cetera, and saying, there's just this photo and it doesn't look like a, a misfire or an accident. And we think that you need to see a version of it and decide. These are automatically put into your selected images. So my first step when I go to these photos, I actually select them all and reject them all. So I get rid of 40 files that are probably not the best photos. And as you can see, this is an intentional photo, but none of them are in focus. So it's doing a good job at warning me about these photos maybe not being great. And I may wanna add some of them back in. There are tools available to you. For instance, this photo, I can use the A key and simply add it back into my selects if I would like to. So that's step one for me personally. Of course, you need to find what works for your shooting style and your workflow best. 
but that is what the warning images are. They're a category of images that are inside of your selected files, which Aftershoot believes may not be the best photos for you. And on some sessions, I may find as many as 300 or 400 of these warned images, so it's very useful for me to start by getting rid of those. Now, the next thing I wanna go over is your closed eyes filter. This closed eyes filter is going to show you all of the images in which there are no other representations. So they don't belong to one of the duplicate sets that Aftershoot created. They're singular images in which the eyes are closed. As you can see, my eyes are closed in both of these photos and they wouldn't have matched any other photo, whether it's a difference in composition, lighting, pose, etc. They're individual photos with closed eyes. You'll find the same for blur as well. These are all photos in which the subject is out of focus, but it doesn't belong with another duplicate image. So this is also a set of images that won't appear anywhere else except in these two tabs. We're gonna go ahead and make believe that within this duplicate set, I didn't like the one that Aftershoot chose. So I can simply use that period and comma key again to find this one. And let's just say I like the dark and moody look of this one where the flash didn't fire. This is my preferred selection. By hitting the S key, you'll notice that the images actually swap ratings. So we'll go back. This is the image that was selected by Aftershoot. I'm on the image that was not selected. I hit the S key for swap and it swaps those ratings out. So now the image that we preferred is selected and the other one is not. Now, if I liked both versions of it or I wanted to take that second version and maybe Photoshop some other things in to make it a little bit more dramatic, I can simply hit the A key to add that second image in. So A will add that second image to my selections. Now, if I decide that this first one is absolutely terrible and I don't like it, if I hit the X key, it'll just reject it and it'll go away. Now, there are some settings that you can change to make this process a little bit different. So for instance, you saw I hit the X key on that photo and it simply rejected it and the photo disappeared from my selections. This is a feature called updating the images in the grid immediately and you'll find that in your preferences. But of course, if you wanna learn more about preferences and customized settings, go ahead and watch the video on the preferences screen. Now, I can go through these files in a multitude of ways. I can either utilize the ASX keys, so add, swap, and reject based on what the AI chose. But in this case, I'm actually gonna do something entirely different. I'm gonna use the My Selections feature because this is for a headshot for a specific example. So I took a lot of pictures because I knew they weren't gonna be in, in focus because I was using a remote and moving around. So instead, what I'm gonna do is actually turn on this toggle for My Selections. And you'll notice when I turn this toggle on, a little circle appears. This is the My Selection circle. So by simply clicking on that circle, it's going to add it to My Selections. And since I'm looking to only pick out a handful of photos here, I would rather use the My Selections tool to just pick my favorites from what the AI suggested. So I can simply scroll through and look for photos that I want to add in and I can either click on the circle or I can hit the keyboard shortcut D and it'll add it to my selections. And this feature also works on the similar images as well. So if I were on this photo and I use the period and comma key and I decide that I like one of the secondary ones better, so let's say I like this photo more, if I hit the D key here, it'll appear in my selections. Now what I've done is created a curated set of four of my favorite images available to me in my selections. Another feature that I absolutely love that a lot of photographers are very, very big on is our spray can mode. So by simply clicking on the spray can, I can now dictate what a left click and a right click will do within Aftershoot. So I can set the left click to actually add images to my selections and I can set the right click to just add them as selected images. So now by scrolling through, if I like a photo, I can simply click on it and it'll add it to my selections. I could also change this to make it reject the images. So by clicking on these ratings, I'm wiping out all of the ratings. So now it'll simply reject an image when I clicked on it. So whatever my workflow is, I have the customizability within the spray can mode to either add things to my selections or reject images that I don't like from that space. Now there are other advanced filters available to you, such as looking at images without faces, which oftentimes will bring images that I'm going to get rid of anyways. These are all test shots or misfires with flash. So I can simply select all of them and go ahead and reject them and get rid of them from my selections. And 
this gives me the freedom to actually sort by images without duplicates. So for my photography style, it's very rare that I'll take a singular photo. I almost always take two or three of the same picture because I don't want to Photoshop eyes and change things. I want the photo in camera the way it should be. So for me, if I see these images that have a singular version of it, they're usually test shots or they're usually photos in which I don't want because I didn't take multiples of them. So this is also a great place where I love to reject those photos. So as you can see, by just rejecting my warning images, rejecting my singular images and my images without faces, I'm already down to 113 photos. So I've gone from 200 to 113 with just a couple clicks of a button. So it's really important to make sure that you're finding the workflow that really fits within your style within Aftershoot, but we left it open-ended so that you can use all of these features to whatever style of photography you're using and however you want to use Aftershoot. Now, of course, we have a ton of other videos that go over how to really utilize Aftershoot in different ways, but we're gonna continue on and tell you how to get out of this screen now. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Save Changes, and then now that the changes have saved, you'll see the button turns into Export. If I simply click on Export, it will allow me to export to Lightroom Classic or Capture One, or I can export to a folder in which I decide whether I'm gonna filter by the stars and colors or the my selections or selected images, whatever I decide Aftershoot can do. And you also have the ability to copy the photos or simply move them, or you can rename them as well. So you have a lot of options when it comes to exporting. But my favorite way to export images is simply to click on my selected quick filter select all of them and simply drag and drop them into my editing software and that'll prompt my editing software to open up and only import those selected images. So as you can see, only 113 images are available to import into Lightroom now. That is Aftershoot in a nutshell. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn some more things about it and how you can utilize Aftershoot to the best of your ability. Thank you for watching.